We don't care. The United States and NATO, we do not care how many Ukrainians die, not civilians, not women, not children, not soldiers. We do not care. We are, it's, it's, it's become a great football game. Uh, you know, we've got our team, they've got our team, rah, rah, we want to get the biggest score and run it up. And, uh, you know, we don't care how many, how many of our players get, uh, get uh, crippled on the, on the playing field, uh, as long as we win. Now, we are shipping fantastic quantities of weapons. Um, and, uh, it's, 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 uh, caused the stock of Raytheon, which creates missiles, and Northrop Grumman, which creates aircraft and so forth, and missiles. Uh, all of these defense industries have become tremendously bloated with, with uh, tax dollars. I don't think it's ultimately going to change the outcome. I think that, uh, I think that Russia will prevail. Uh, the Ukrainians are in a very awkward strategic position uh, in the East. Um, but uh, if, you, if you look at the way that this unfolded, President Putin made a desperate effort to, to stop the march towards war. Back in, in December of 2021, he went so far as to put specific written proposals on the table with NATO, peace proposals to, to defuse what was coming about. Because at this point, Ukraine was massing troops to attack the Donbass. Uh, and uh, so he was trying to head this off. He didn't want war. And uh, NATO just blew it off, just dismissed it. Uh, never took it seriously, never went into serious negotiations. At that point, Putin, seeing that uh, that armed Ukrainians uh, with weapons to kill Russian troops were literally on their borders, decided he had to strike first. Now, you can see that this was not this was not some pre-planned attack. This was not like. Uh, like Hitler's attack into Poland, uh, where the, the, the standard rule of thumb is that you always have a three to one advantage when you are the attacker. You have to mass three times as many tanks and, and artillery and planes and men as the other side has. In fact, when Russia went in, they, they went in sort of with what they had what they could cobble together on short notice, and they were outnumbered by the Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian forces had about 250,000. The Russians had perhaps 160,000. Um, so instead of having three times as many, they actually had fewer troops than the Ukrainians, and but they were forced to attack to try to preempt the battle that was was looming, where the uh, the Ukrainians had massed these forces against the Donbass. Now the Donbass is adjacent to Russia. It is a a portion of Ukraine that did not join uh, with the revolutionary government that conducted the coup in 2014 and overthrew the, the government of, of Ukraine. Uh, they, they refused to become a part of the new revolutionary uh, government of Ukraine. And uh, so they, de they declared their independence. And uh, Ukraine had massed this enormous army to attack against the Donbass. And so Russia was forced to go in to preempt that uh, that planned attack by Ukraine. And uh, you could see that Russia very much hoped that they could conduct this special operation without unduly causing casualties for the Ukrainians, because they 
they they think of the Ukrainians, or at least they did think of the Ukrainians as as brother Slavs uh, that uh, they they wanted to have good relations. But there there was a famous picture with a, a Russian tank that had been stopped by a gathering of maybe forty civilians who just walked out in the road and blocked the road, and the tank stopped. I can tell you. In Vietnam, if we had had uh, a bunch of people who who stood in the way of an American tank going through, that tank would not have slowed down in the slightest. It wouldn't have honked a horn. It wouldn't have done anything. Wouldn't have fired a warning shot. It would have just gone on. And and uh, and I think that's more typical. I'm not I'm not criticizing the Americans. Uh, I, I would I was there and I was fighting and I probably would have would have driven the tanks straight through myself. But what I'm saying is that the the rules of engagement for the Russians were very, very cautious. They didn't want to create a great deal of hatred and animosity. They The Russians did not go in. They did not bomb uh, the electrical system, the, the media systems, uh, the water systems, all of these, the, the the bridges and so forth, they tried to retain uh, the infrastructure of Ukraine in good shape because they they wanted it to get back. They just wanted this to be over with and get back to normal. <clears throat> it didn't work. The Ukrainians, the, the resistance was unexpectedly uh, hard. Uh, the Ukrainian soldiers fought with, with great Great valor, great heroism, and uh, and so now the 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 game has been upped and it's become much much more serious. But uh, it is amazing to look and and to see that Russia dominates the air. They haven't knocked out the train systems. They haven't knocked out power plants. They haven't knocked out. Uh, so many things. They've never bombed the uh, uh, the the buildings in the center of Kiev. They, you know, the the capital of uh, of Ukraine. They haven't bombed the the buildings where the parliament meets. Uh, they, they've been incredibly reserved about these things, hoping against hope that peace could be achieved. But I don't think. I don't think Ukraine has anything to do with the decision about peace or war. I think the decision about peace or war is made in Washington, D.C. Uh, as long as we want the war to continue, we will fight that war using Ukrainians as proxies, and we will fight it to the last Ukrainian death. 